Hello, viewers, this is Sharon Stone with another installment of Health in the Classroom. After last week's topic, the digestive system, we've decided change to another important system in the human body, the integumentary system. Without it, well, we wouldn't look too good. Throughout this program, we will talk about the main parts of the system, its functions and some diseases and disorders. This is most definitely the largest organ in our body. It is 12 to 16 percent of our body's mass. Parts of the system include skin, hairs, glands, and the nails. But the bulk of the integumentary system is the skin, the largest organ in our body. The skin itself is comprised of three layers. The epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous. First, we will talk about the epidermis. The outermost layer of the skin is called the epidermis. This layer has a total of four smaller layers or five on the hands and feet. The stratum corneum is the outer layer of skin, 20 to 30 cells thick. Cells here are dead and keratinized where they are turned into keratin, a protein, by keratinocytes that helps protect the skin. After the stratum corneum comes the stratum granulosum and the stratum lucidum. These are partially keratinized cells which are pushed out by the ever-growing stratum germinativum layer. Melanocytes are present in the first three layers. These cells add color to the skin and absorb light. In the deepest layer, Merkel's cells' discs are present. These are sensitive to stimulus. Now on to the dermis. The dermis, similar to the epidermis, consists of separate layers. The papillary and reticular. The papillary is the first layer, which has ridges and valleys that create fingerprints. The reticular layer holds the hair, glands, and nerves. These are much more complex structures since this layer has its own blood supply. Both layers are made of various proteins. The subcutaneous is the final layer of skin. Comprised of mainly adipose, fatty or resembling fat tissues, these fatty tissues help protect and cushion the internal organs and regulate body temperature. Separate structures inside this layer are the veins and arteries. First there is hair. Hair is composed of keratin the same protein present in the epidermis. The physical structure of a hair has three layers. The medulla innermost layer present only in long and thick hairs. Cortex adds the strength and color, and cuticle protects the cortex. Other important parts include the hair shaft, the hair follicle and the root it surrounds. The erector pili, a microscopic muscle, is located at the base of every hair. When you are cold or frightened the muscle contracts and causes the goosebumps on the skin surface. Next let's talk about the various glands specific to the integumentary system. Glands are very common structures in the skin. Sebaceous glands produce the body's natural oil, sebum. These glands are attached to the hair shaft. If there is an overproduction of sebum, pores from eccrine glands will become clogged and acne is the result. Eccrine glands produce sweat, a watery substance with various solids. This gland doesn't need a hair to reach the skin, but they have their own pores. Apocrine glands are very much similar to these eccrine glands but they produce a milky sweat that has an odor. They are located in the areas of the body and where we find the most sweat. Nails are highly keratinized cells growing, at 1 mm per week, out of the epidermis. At the beginning of the nail bed, where the nail starts, there is the lunula, the thickest part of the nail. The main function of the skin is to protect our insides from bacteria, climate, and water loss. Another function happens to be thermal regulation where, as said in the title, regulates your body temperature. All these are necessary in homeostasis, 
the process that keeps the systems running correctly. This system senses climate changes in touch with nerves. The skin absorbs vitamin D from sunlight. The skin acts as a protective barrier from most substances, but certain oils and fats can penetrate the barrier. Eccrine glands store and dispose of waste from the, the bloodstream. Nails help grasp objects. Sunburn is caused by overexposure to ultraviolet radiation. The symptoms are red, painful skin, in mild cases. More severe cases have the blisters and peeled skin. Taking a cold shower and applying moisturizing cream to affected areas can help relieve the pain. Eczema is the result of hypersensitivity to a specific substance or circumstance, grass, irritants, or stress. Common symptoms include lichenification, thickened and turned leathery skin, discolorations, rashes and itching. Creams and ointments containing steroids often relieve the issue. Keeping skin moisturized can help cure and prevent the eczema from returning. Varicose veins, spider veins, are caused when blood begins to pool in a vein, due to restricted blood flow. Symptoms include leg swelling, abnormally enlarged veins, and skin discoloration. Standing for long periods, high abdominal pressure, and pregnancy are common causes. In only severe cases surgery is necessary, but in mild cases radiotherapy and laser therapy can cure the problem. Alopecia areata is the loss of hair patches. This can occur on the anywhere where hair is present. Ultraviolet light therapy and topical corticosteroids from the adrenal glands above the kidneys can trigger hair regrowth. Impetigo is a contagious skin infection caused by Streptococci or Staphylococcus. These bacteria leave crusty patches on the skin. This common disorder can be treated by antibacterial ointment, in small cases. While oral antibiotics are administered to deal with widespread cases, skin cancer is a very serious disease. It can, can be classified into two categories basal and squamous cell, then melanoma. Basal and squamous cell abnormalities are not as serious as the malignant cells of melanoma. Both are caused by the overexposure to ultraviolet radiation. Tumors caused can be surgically removed and or treated with radiation. The skin is much more complicated than it seems. Multiple layers with their own specific functions create something very interesting to study so much to learn. If you would like more information please Google the integumentary system. Thank you for watching. See you guys next week. Bye.